Hi, this is Bill Frank. We're at hangar number 34 at Point Magoo Air Base. We're here to cover the change of command here with the Naval Base at Port Wyneme and Naval Base Ventura County. We're looking out at the audience of dignitaries that are here. Members of the Port Wyneme City Council are here. Of course, members of the military themselves. Veterans of foreign wars that have served in the Navy. And then down the center aisle, you can see his honor, the mayor of Port Wyneme, Doug Breeze standing there in the light coat, as well as Sheriff Jeff Dean and other dignitaries here. In the crowd, we've noticed Tony Strickland and other members of the assembly are here to honor the change of command as well. In the background, you hear the naval band playing stirring naval tunes as we prepare for the official change of command. As the ceremony unfolds, the new captain will walk down a gauntlet of fellow officers, and it looks like a chief petty officer make his way to the stage. On the stage, he'll make a few brief remarks. There will be the official change of command, followed by the ceremonial ringing of the Navy bell, which will then end the formal ceremony, the formal change of command ceremony. And we'll cover this live for you on KADY TV and, of course, streaming over the Internet. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. <laughs> Captain, United States Navy, arriving. Naval Base, Ventura County, arriving. <laughs> Navy Region Southwest, arriving. Navy Installations Command, arriving.
red colors. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem will be sung by Miss Leslie Spetzer from Cabrillo Music Theater. Sideways, post. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the national anthem and the invocation. Captain, United States Navy, arriving.
Naval Base, Ventura County, arriving. Navy Region Southwest, arriving. Navy Installations Command, arriving. Red the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem will be sung by Miss Leslie Spetzer from Cabrillo Music Theater.
retire the colors. Side boys, post.
buyers in the program, so I'm not going to read that to you. And he, I know he likes short introductions, so no need to upset the admiral on my last day. A submariner by trade, but over the past six years, he's been a great leader in the Naval Installations Enterprise. Most recently, as my boss, Navy Regional Southwest, and now as the big boss at uh, Commander Naval Installations Command. Please join me in welcoming a man who is a great Navy leader, has been an outstanding supporter of me and Naval Base Ventura County for the past three years. Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Bill French. Maybe 
construction force mobilization of the CVs of the Port Wanimi, airfields, ranges, the only military deep water port between San Diego and Seattle. And oh, by the way, they also have a little island on the coast. Tenants, in fact, I will tell you that it, has, it hosts the most diverse set of tenants in many base in the southwest. Combine all these things with the base's strategic location here on the Gold Coast and easily understand the importance of this base to the Navy mission. Jim, your tour here has been truly exceptional. Beyond the aviation and port operations missions that you've done flawlessly, I'd like to know just a few of the other significant things that you and that your county team have accomplished. You've taken great, great care of sailors, and I know this is one of your top priorities, and their families. Improved and upgraded faster mission quarters, base galleys, three of which were identified as three star ratings for the Naval War competition. So five star ratings, it's the highest mark you can get. Improvements to the physical readiness centers and open the flight line cafe, which I was able to go to last night. <laughs> Naval Base Ventura County teams earned numerous awards, such as the 2001 Naval Award for the Best Shore Gallery in the Navy, the Governor's Award for Historic Preservation, the Ventura County Emergency Planning Council Award for the Best Emergency Preparedness Exercise, and the Secretary of the Navy Awards for Natural Resources Conservation. Army stewardship, as well as the energy and water conservation over at the platform, that's the highest level possible. And he's done that over the last three consecutive years, all three years he's been in the community space. As a good neighbor, we've led two community land use forms, which increased community support, compatible development, and the approval for a joint land use form. One of the reasons why this space is so critical to the Navy and remains so is because of the development of black and a lot of that has to do with the community, and a lot of that has to do with the CO community. And I think you're probably most proud of the base to work with wounded warriors and their efforts to train or work with the warrior kids. The base hosted the last six camps here for both the Navy and Coast Guard, Paralympic teams. Nearly 100 wounded warriors have come and trained as part of the team. And you and your folks here have made them feel as though they're part of the Navy base, which you're a county team. There's more, in fact, I would say there's much more, but the thrust is clear. Jim McHugh has led his, led his team mature to get the job done no matter what the task, with accomplishments that help set the standard for base support to our fleet, our fighters, and our families. Jim, you know as I do that the real work in the Shore Enterprise is done not at Washington, D.C., CNIC headquarters. Not in San Diego at the region, but at the base, at the tip of the spear, at the service delivery, the delivery point, where the fleet, our sailors, and their families live and work. And I'm, and I'm convinced that you and your team epitomize what I consider one of the very best definitions of short service. It's not how many you serve, but how well you serve that matters the most. Strength, fortitude, courage, of our great leaders, like Captain Q and Captain Esquits, are part of what makes the United States Navy the greatest in the world. But the other part of what makes the Navy so strong is the magnificent, magnificent support system that stands behind them and behind all of our sailors, their loved ones, and their families. Jim and Larry's families are the foundation of that exceptional support. We have our name to keep us grounded in our course. We in uniform understand and appreciate the personal sacrifices they make. One of the markers of the Navy Memorial in Washington, D.C. says it all about families. Those who wait also serve. Karen, Kelsey, Abby, and Libby, thanks for what you've done, not just during your husband's and your dad's tours of community officer here at Nathan Base Ventura County through his entire career. Those days when you were employed, those days when you on long trips, and those times when you guys had to uproot, uproot and move to the home. Thanks. He would not have a successful career in the without your dedicated support and understanding. But a round of applause.
So I understand Jim's still looking at what he's going to do now that he's retired from the Navy. He made it very clear he's not leaving here. <laughs> Jim, just remember that retire does not mean buying for more new missions for the family car. I can, I can say with complete confidence that Jim, Jim will be very successful in whatever he decides to do. Jim and Cameron wish you both the very best. So bid farewell to the Q family. Welcome Larry and Nancy Desquez. Captain Desquez comes to us from his previous assignment in Washington, D.C., where he was a Navy Executive Fellow at the Brookings Institute. Prior to that, he commanded a provincial reconstruction team in Afghanistan. Larry is clearly the right officer for this assignment. He has the background, he has leadership skills, and I am confident he will take what Jim McHugh and the team here at Chair County have accomplished in the last three years and take it to the next level. Larry and Nancy, Monica, and I welcome you to the CIC family and, family and to the family in the Southwest region. All right, I look forward to working with you. I also want to thank my Navy supporters here at Oxnard and the Greater Mature County community. Our Navy has had a long and close relationship with this community. You allow us to be part of your family. We're your neighbors, we're your customers, but most importantly, you're our friends. You do wonderful things for our Navy, who serve for the Navy and for their families. You don't have to do this, but you do, and I thank you. No matter what the occasion, I always like to take an opportunity to talk a little bit about our sailors, their families, and what they do. You, you know the challenges we face. We're at war. We still face the effects of the sluggish world economy. New challenges seem to surface. Our Navy is fully engaged across the globe, executing the entire spectrum of naval operations, tasking the goes far beyond the world. And we do it all with a smaller Navy today of 285 ships, versus which is about half the size of our Navy in 1985. Our sailors, sailors, our heroes, great Americans, and I will tell you the most important part of our Navy. They accept the sacrifice and hardship that come with sea duty and this way of life, as do their families. They sacrifice every day, devoting their lives to a cause greater than themselves. They are why our Navy is a global force for good, guarding our nation's vital interest and joining with others to promote security and prosperity around the globe. The Navy sure and its bases are a very big part of the Navy's ability that it does so around the world. And it's at these bases where the real work of Navy Shore Institute is done. Headquarters and region give our bases and their teams the tools so they in turn can provide the fleet, sailors, families with what they need. Navy Shore is large, complex, and diverse, with many different challenges. Last week at the CNIC Change of Command Ceremony in Washington, D.C., CNO quoted a former PAC fleet commander, Admiral, Admiral Clemens, who once said, was once asked how he described the job of a regional commander. And Admiral Clemens said, Well, it's a job where you know for sure that you will get less money tomorrow than you have today. Is our military smaller, budgets leaner, and scrutiny is increasing? But scrutiny is not something we should fear. Rather, we will embrace it because we owe it to ourselves, our leaders, our Navy, and our nation. We better describe how the Navy gets what's invested in the ship so that we can constantly show how, how are we doing, how are we getting better, and how will we continue to improve. I can't predict the future. But I can tell you this, based on all that I've seen and learned in my time as a regional commander, I'm not worried about our ability to achieve success. Why? Because our Navy has consistently met them before. It's part of our culture. Each
material supplies the one that surpasses the one that came before it. Tackles the challenges and problems of the day and day adds value and makes the situation better. My time with CNIC has taught me anything is that we have some of the best, brightest, and most talented professionals in the Navy, like those here in the team that you're Remember that in the end, it isn't and can't be just about the money and the budget. Rather, it's about supporting CNO leaders' sailing directions. We're fighting first, operate forward, and be ready. Doing what's right for our sailors and families at the point of service at our bases. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a privilege for me to be here today. I thank you for being here and being part of this event and supporting both Captain Vesquez and Captain McHugh and their families. I wish you the very best. May uh, God bless our Navy and our nation. And our troops with the command of ease. Hello, French. Thank you so much for those kind words and the award. Thank you also for traveling back to the left coast to speak at this special event. It really means a lot to Karen and me. Thank you also for your outstanding support as Southwest Region Commander during the majority of my time as the 
really was a pleasure working for you. Admiral Smith, thank you, sir, for fitting us into your whirlwind travels you've had over the past several months since taking over the region. You command a great bunch of folks down there in the region, and I thank you and them for their support. Admiral Schlansky, I'm so happy that your schedule worked out that you're able to be here for this, uh, this event. You are a true leader and inspiration for the Hawkeye community. I always remember, I think it was the two weeks we spent there at uh, Beth Page at uh, Northrop Grumman going through uh, the, the factory training for Group 2. Way back when I was an instructor in the rag and you were going through your, uh, your department tour at Vietnam 113. Those are some pretty long uh, weeks, but I, I remember we did have some fun there in New York City. Fellow region, uh, Southwest uh, COs, installation COs. Captains Smith, Lindsay, David, Venema, Jones, Lazar, Aubrey. Captain Rich, Chief Staff, thanks for being here. Fellow NBBC captains, commanding officers, family and friends, again, thank you all for attending today. Now, I first want to give you the plan here. Okay? As you know, in addition to the change of command, this is also my retirement ceremony. But I've changed my mind. <laughs> No, no, just kidding. In the interest of time and attention span, I'm, dreading, I'm directing that comment to all the aviators in the room. I'm only going to speak once, but it's going to have two parts. So no need to worry that this is going to go on forever. I think I should have you home probably in time for dinner. All right, so does anyone know where the last three years went? I'll tell you. It seems like it was just last year that I was standing up here and taking command of the Naval Base in Missouri County. In fact, I venture to say that many of you out there feel the same way. And I know it's a fact because just recently I was out in town at an event speaking with a gentleman I hadn't met before. And during the conversation, he mentioned, So you're the new commander of the Naval Base? <laughs> well, I guess it takes three years to get rid of that new guy, uh, today. Now, just as a show of hands, and I bet you didn't think this was going to be audience participation, but as a show of hands, who all was here three years ago? All right, well, that lets me know how many stories I can repeat. <laughs> well, to say that the past three years has been a whirlwind, that would really be an understatement. These past years of command have been the most challenging yet most fulfilling of my 26 years in the Navy. I could not have achieved the success that I achieved without the great men and women, both military and civilian, that's, that surround me and got the work done. For the past three years, my mission at MBBC, and this mission I've preached through all those that work at the base, is our mission is to support the tenant commands so they can accomplish their mission. And that's not only the military and DOD civilians, but it also includes military families. For without taking care of the families and their needs, it makes it very difficult for the sailor to maintain focus on his mission and his unit. I believe I've been able to accomplish that mission. And I know that that mission will continue to be accomplished under the leadership of Captain Larry Vasquez. MBBC has a very diverse group of tenants, many from many different communities in the Navy, many of which I was familiar with, aviation, surface warfare. But it really wasn't until this tour that I gained the full appreciation of the CV community. This group is more than just sailors and building things. No, they are a group of warriors who are in demand by many, if not all, of the senior leaders on the battlefield for their expertise, professionalism, and can-do spirit. Something that is not present in their counterparts in the other services. It truly has been an honor to work with the CVs and a privilege to get to know many of those folks in this community, both officer and enlisted. I am now a fan of the Seabees. Thank you for what you do in defense of this nation. Now, as many of you know, this was my third tour here at Naval Base in County. But it was only during this tour that I was able to engage with and experience the superb support that the community of Ventura County provides to the base and those who work, live, and deploy for this installation. Nowhere in my Navy career have I experienced such a supportive community. As I said earlier, I attribute that to the community leaders and the 
and those that I mentioned uh, earlier at the beginning of this ceremony, as well as each and every one of you here. It truly has been a pleasure working with you and the community, and I'm very proud and excited to be staying in this Ventura County area, and hope to be able to continue to work with you to keep this county moving in the right direction. Now, I've said it before and I will say it again, this base cannot have achieved the success it did without the people that work at this base every day. In fact, this award is really a testament to your hard work. It's been an honor and privilege to be your commanding officer. Now, it would not be possible really for me to thank everyone this morning, because if I did, you would be here till dinner. But I really want to mention just a few folks. First of all, I'd like to thank my side boys, Captains Randy Blackman, Todd Watkins, Matt Danahy, Kevin Johnson, Tom Broberone, John Corco, Marshall Sykes, Yancey Lindsay. Thank you guys for participating. It's truly an honor that you agreed to do this, to participate, and I'm really blessed to have friends such as you gentlemen. Next, I'd like to thank Mr. Ron Bratton, my M5, also known as Strategy and Future Requirements. Ron, the corporate knowledge that you have in this installation is amazing. I guess you get that from being here forever. But thank you all for thank you for the hard work, straightforward advice, and counsel that you provided. You always had the best interest of me and this organization in mind. Thank you for that dedication. Now, as I mentioned, part of my mission was to support the military families. I could not have accomplished that without the dedication and diligence of my community support program director, Deborah Williams, and her wonderful team of Fred Morgan, Ron Nardizzi, Peter Falk, Debbie Bergstrom, Laura Hamilton, and many others behind the scenes making MWR, Fleet and Family Service, housing, galleys, and child youth programs so successful. Thanks, Deborah, for your leadership. You really made things happen, and you always knew the standards I wanted to set. You truly run a first class operation. Thanks again for your unending support. Now, I also need to thank someone special from the MWO department, and that's my trainer, Christian Rene. I really enjoyed those 5.30 in the morning torture sessions. And I, but however, I keep planning, I'm going to keep planning on doing it. So I guess I'm really just a glutton for punishment. So I guess I'll be seeing you in my name. Another part of the family support is my ombudsman. I had two, Heather Kapruski and Tina Eagleson. Thank you, ladies, for supporting the families keeping the communication flow going. I'd like to thank my two operations officers, Commander Chris Kenefick and Commander Charles Huff before him. Chris, I know we go a ways back with both being two NFOs. I know this job is a little different than uh, being in a squadron. And sometimes it was trying the hard time to try to fully understand the way uh, things work in the CIAC enterprise. And when you figure that out, please let me know. But nonetheless, you did a great job evading air ops, force protection, fed fire, port ops. Thanks for your loyalty, dedication, and professionalism. Now, an installation commanding officer would not be successful without this strong and talented public works officer. And I had two of them, Commander Pete Hammond and my current public works officer, Commander Mike Oberman. Now, I cannot think of a harder installation to be a public works officer than here in the mecca of the Civil Engineer Corps. Thank you, thank you and your PW team, Tom Carr, Diane Bentley, Jim Danza, Dan Shine, just to name a few. Thank you for being the honest broker, being patient with a non-engineer like me, and always having the best interest of the installation in mind. You really made a lot happen, even though you felt you were always bringing me bad news. The good really outweighed the bad. Thanks, Mike. One of the key successes, keys to a successful command tour, of course, is strong and listed, senior enlisted leadership. Now, I would be remiss if I did not mention and thank my three command master chiefs. They'd probably come and get me too if I didn't say anything. I really had a pleasure working with three of them during my tour. Master Chief Glenn Brunel, Dean Joyce, and my current master chief, Command Master Chief Tom Sear. All three men professionals and warriors in their own right, who always had the best needs of the sailors in the forefronts of their mind. They provided great advice to me at the right time. Now, 
as many of you know, the advice of a grand master chief, on fact, the advice of any master chief, is usually not sugarcoated. So as an example, last summer I was having a discussion with Master Chief Sear about my future in the Navy, one of the many discussions we had. And he asked me, as he's done before, so what are you going to do? Well, I answered like I had many of the other times, kind of pensively said, well, you know, I think I'm probably going to retire. Well, this time I probably kind of think he got tired of that response and said, well, sir, when are you going to get rid of probably from that statement? Well, Master Chief, I got rid of the problem. Thank you for the support, and I wish we had longer to serve you. Next, what would a good leader be without a right-hand man? And I've had three outstanding chief staff officers. Captains Dave Fleisch, Tony Edmonds, and my current CSO, Dave Sasson. I'm blessed here at Naval Base Ventura County to have a senior 06 CEC officer as a chief staff officer. For the see, they grow up in the Navy facilities world and are able to really provide insight to those matters to us aviators in command of the installation. Each of these fine officers was great at their duties of managing the staff, but equally important, they were great advisors, sounding boards, and most importantly, friends. Dave, thanks for watching my back and being able to translate that uh, NAFAC jargon into something I can understand. It's been a real pleasure. I don't know if you notice a trend here. I've had three CMCs, three CSOs, and in fact, I'm on my third region commander. So, I've either been here too long or I'm driving people away. I think I'll have to more. Finally, I'd really like to thank uh, the woman who is really the brains of this organization. The person who is, goes, everyone goes to, who wants to find out what's going on, get a phone number. The person who for the past three years kept me on schedule was a gatekeeper and managed to keep that inbox full. This is no other than my executive assistant, Ms. Adrian Taha. Adrian, let's give her a round of applause. Adrian, thank you so much for your support, dedication, and patience. You made coming to work every day a pleasure. I will truly miss working for you. I mean working with you. It's going to be hard to wake up next Monday morning and not find out and ask you what's on my schedule. Guess I'm going to have to manage that myself. I hope I don't miss anything. Later, you are a treasure in the Naval Base of Ventura County. And these flowers really are just a token of my appreciation. Thank you for your support. I'd like to welcome Larry Vasquez and his wife Nancy, and children Dina and Chris, and mother in law Emily to the Naval Base of Ventura County family. You will find the next three years some of the most rewarding in your career. There is a steep learning curve, but I know you're up to the task. This outstanding community will welcome you open arms and support you all the way. Knowing what I know now, I really wish I was in your shoes. Good luck, I know you'll do well. Alright, since no one knew where the last three years went, I bet no one knows where the last 26 years went. It's really been a great ride. I joined the Navy because it was the life I've known. And I really enjoyed the experience I had in the first 17 years of my life. But I also had an ulterior motive. See, I made a deal with my father. I said, if I get a scholarship, you buy me a car. <laughs> well, I received my four-year Navy scholarship. And sophomore year in college, he bought me my car, Camaro. That was a cool car to have on campus in 1984, I'll tell you. But it wasn't the car that kept me in the Navy for 26 years. It was the duty and the people. Now, if you ask anyone who knows me well what I am deeply passionate about, they will tell you I'm passionate about my alma mater and state. And it is easy to spot my house. It's the one with the Penn State banners hanging all over it. Now, as you know, it's been a tough 
tough several months for my university, but I never lost faith or support for that institution. Just last month, we lost an icon, a true hero in my eyes, and of course, as Joe Paterno. He is a man who is a leader, a scholar, educator, philanthropist, and oh yes, a football coach who I had the honor of playing with under for a short period of time. His influence on me and my perspective of leadership was immense. Joker would say, believe deep down in your heart you're destined to do great things. And that is so true. It's really about your attitude. He has touched so many lives and has taught me a lot over the past 26 years in the Navy about honor, courage, commitment, and integrity. Even in death, as in life, he continues to be one of my role models. Now I'd also like to thank two other people who cannot be with us today, but were with me for 19 and 21 years of my 26 years in the Navy. That's of course my parents. My father was in the Navy for 30 years. In fact, as many of you know, Point Magoo was his first duty station back in 1955. So how appropriate is it for me to end my Navy career where my father started his? One of the phrases my father always said, told me, and I carried with me all these years, was bloom where you're planted. That phrase is so true. I've passed that on to all the folks I've had the pleasure to meet. I always used to kid my father that I was going to get one more star than he did. See, he retired as a two-star admiral. Well, unfortunately, that did not happen. But I'm not troubled by that. Because I know, as a result of the strong foundation my parents instilled in me, I bloomed where I was planted. And I thank them for that. I'd also like to thank and recognize my sister, Margie, who's here today with her husband, John. Thank you for your advice, support, and being a sounding board over these years. Thank you for traveling here from D.C. to be part of this event, as you have been to so many of my change of command ceremonies. Your presence makes this more special. I'm really honored to have my uh, other mom and dad here. That's Karen's parents, Marilyn and Hal Perner, who traveled from Rochester, New York, to be here. So let's see, February, Southern California, February, upstate New York. I think you made the right choice. Thank you for being here. Your love, support, really helped me a lot. It means a lot to me. Even though you're a University of Michigan school fans. <laughs> you were there at Penn State when I got commissioned. And now here at my retirement. Thank you for sharing in that journey. I also want to recognize some longtime friends who traveled to share the day with me and my family. First is Pat Smith, who came from Sacramento. Pat was a great friend of my parents when they lived in Sacramento. Thank you for making the trip. Next is Ralph and Molly Calloway from San Diego. Ralph has been part of the McHugh family since I think I was five. He worked for my father when we were stationed in Hawaii. And he didn't want me to say this, but he babysat my sister. Thank you for coming out. It's really special that you're here. Now, the former, former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, said, I did not decide to stay in the Navy alone. My family had a role. I firmly believe we recruit a sailor, but we retain a family. Now, none of us who wear the cloth of this great nation could achieve the success we do, or enjoy these successes, without the encouragement, support, and sacrifices our families make. My family's no different. My three beautiful daughters, Kelsey, Abby, and Lily. You girls have been such good sports throughout this Navy life. You've made moves, gone to different schools, make new friends, leave old friends, but throughout it all, you've been very supportive. You girls sure do keep life interesting. Now, with two teenagers in the house, I think it's going to even get a little more interesting. Without you, my life would be empty. Thank you for joining me on this Navy ride. You are the light of my life, and I love you. Karen, what can I say? 
You are the cornerstone of this family. I could not have done this without you in my corner cheering me all the way. Your ability to juggle so many tasks, from soccer transportation to doctor's appointments to being a team mom and a Navy wife, all while home holding down a full-time job is just amazing. As we approach our 25th anniversary, you still are my closest confidant, best friend, and love of my life. Thank you for being there with me the whole way. I look forward to whatever the next chapter brings, but it's comforting to know that we will be experiencing it together. These past 26 years have been great. I've been able to go on numerous deployments, a couple of around the world journeys. I've been able to take off and land on aircraft carriers for over 400 times, and it's great when both those numbers equal. This Navy career has enabled me to meet different people, experience different cultures, but most importantly, has enabled me to lead the finest young men and women this great country has to offer. You can be extraordinarily proud of the young men and women who serve in your Navy every day, in every place on this planet. They're doing good work on every ocean, on every continent, on the sea, above the sea, and under the sea. And as we've committed ourselves over the last several years to the deserts of Iraq, Afghanistan, and throughout the world, the young men and women who wear this uniform would make each and every one of you proud, extraordinarily proud of how they, what they do, how they do it, but most importantly, how they represent you as Americans. And it's been just a great pleasure and privilege and honor that I've had to be a part of that organization for the past 20 So I want to thank you all again for everything that you do, for your support, your concern, for your interest in supporting the greatest Navy that has ever sailed the world's oceans. Well, I guess the time has come. It's time to move on. Can't delay it anymore, Larry. It's time for the McHugh family to start a new adventure. But fortunately, it's a new adventure in the community that I'm very comfortable in and proud to be a part of. But before I go, I want to leave you with an old Irish blessing that my father would end his uh, speeches with. May the road rise to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rain fall soft upon your shoulders. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you, and God bless.
that sounds scary, it's because it was. He made me a better aviator and a better officer, and I am proud to call him a friend. Thank you. I would like to thank the air crew from my former squadron, the Rope Pack of HSL 45, now HSM 45, from San Diego. They are flying one of the Navy's newest helicopters, and changing the course of helicopter operations and naval aviation. The helicopter is new and smells like a, real, like a new car. It really does. It's right behind me. I encourage you to speak with some of our finest after the ceremony. A big thanks to everyone involved in the ceremony today, including the Navy Band, Color Guard, Galley, VR-55, and everyone who worked tirelessly to make this a great event. Thanks to the Ventura County community and the MVPC staff for the warm welcome. And I look forward to working with you to make Naval Base Ventura County the finest Naval Base in the world. Finally, my sincere thanks to Captain Jim McKee for his leadership and professionalism during his 26 years of service to our nation. It is clear that Jim has made a positive impact both on each of our installations and within our Ventura community. Fair winds and following seas to you and your beautiful family. Thank you. God bless you. God bless our Navy and God bless the United States of America. Today we will also recognize Captain James A. McHugh upon his retirement following 26 years of active duty in the United States Navy. We are gathered to say thank you to the great shipping. Thank you for your many contributions, which in their own way have made our Navy a stronger and more capable force in our never-ending fight for peace in this sometimes troubled world. Thank you, Captain, for your many dedicated hours, personal initiative that helped make Naval Base Ventura County the proud professional organization that it is today. Just as this is the end of one phase of your life, it is the beginning of another. So our gathering today also gives us the opportunity to wish you every success in the future as you look forward to new challenges and new rewards. We also want to recognize Captain Q's wife, Karen, and his daughters, Kelsey, Abby, and Libby. I know that you, more than any of us, are vividly aware of the sacrifices you and Father has made in service to our country. And I speak for the entire command when I say how pleased we are to have you here with us today. We will now present Captain King's family with letters of appreciation. Lieutenant Gaffman, please escort Karen, Kelsey, Abby, and Lily to the state. Certificate of Appreciation from the United States Navy to all who shall see these presents and greetings. Karen McHugh, today after completing 26 years of active naval service, your husband has ended an honorable and faithful service to his country and his efforts are sincerely appreciated. Such a rich and rewarding career reflects a strong commitment to the principles of freedom and democracy and the belief that they must be upheld at any cost. That type of total commitment is not possible without the full support of the entire family. Although we may never have had to carry out a military order or deploy in hostile waters, your loyalty and steadfast support of your husband's career can rightly be viewed as continued service to your country. That loyalty and dedication were significant sources of strength in your husband during his arduous duties and exemplified the highest traditions of on behalf of the Department of the Navy and the officers and sailors of Naval Base Ventura County, I extend to you a sincere thanks and express our appreciation for a job well done. Given this 24th day of February 2012, signed D.R. Smith Burr Avenue, United States Navy, Commander, Navy Region Southwest. 
Similar certificates are being presented to Kelsey, Abby, and Lily McHugh. Adam Smith is also presenting Karen with the Military Spouse Medal and Captain Q's Daughters with Military Child Medals. These medals are gratefully given to those who do not ask, those who stay on the home front so that their spouse and father can serve, for they also proudly serve their country. Commodore Corga and Command Master Chief Mulholland will now, on behalf of the Navy's King B, Rear Admiral Chris Mossy, and our CB Force Master Chief, Force Dickey, formally present Captain Q with a signed decree granting him the status of Honorary CB. Navy records indicate that the designation Honorary CB was formally established in 1974. At that time, the Chief of Civil Engineers, Rear Admiral Mike Marshall, the CB Force Master Chief Johnny McCulley determined that the informality in which field units were making such a designation was inappropriate. Accordingly, they established a formal program by which only the Chief of Civil Engineers and the Force Master Chief could levy such an esteemed honor. Since that time, less than 50 personnel have been bestowed with this prestigious title. The list is impressive and includes the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mike Mullen, Prior secretaries of the Navy, such as former Secretary Lawrence Garrett III, a few CNOs and Marine Corps Commandants have also been given this title, not to mention political figures, such as former Secretary of State George Schultz, and yes, even a few well-known actors such as the Duke John Wayne, and one other honorary senior who is well-known by all around the world, our 40th President and Commander-in-Chief Ronald Reagan. This day we are honored to add Captain Q to this impressive list for his supporting of our naval base of Dura County CVs and promoting our can do legacy. With the presentation of the honorary CV to Captain Q, I ask the audience to stand. Military detention in recognition of this honor. Please stand. Citation reads, the United States Naval Construction Force, to all seas, sailors, marines, and other denizens of this world, greetings, knowing that Captain James J. Q. of the United States Navy, having ardently promoted and supported the United States Navy and its Naval Construction Force, and having demonstrated the traditional and 
Adjacent to the awards table is Captain Q's retirement shadow box, instructed by Bill Chief Petty Officer Joe Bushman. Captain Q's retirement shadow box will depict his career achievements in the United States Navy. Upon completion of the retirement ceremony, Captain Q will place his many awards and uniform devices, indicating the ranks he progressed through as he worked his way up the advancement ladder into the box. Additionally, the bottom portion is for the National Navy's symbolic of the nation which he so faithfully served during his 26 years on active duty. Captain Q also received letters from the Commander-in-Chief, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, as well as Presidents Clinton and George W. Bush. Along with these letters, Captain Q also received a certificate of recognition from California State Senator Tony Strickland, a resolution from the Board of Supervisors from Ventura County, a commendation from the City of City Council of the City of Oxnard, and one from the City of Camarillo, and a certificate of recognition from the Ventura County Sheriff's Office, signed by Sheriff Jeff Dean. All these mementos are displayed on the awards table to my left. Today our Navy has given most of the pomp and circumstance, the honors, traditions, and ceremonies back to history. Time does not give us the freedom to do these things from the past. We still have to stop all engines, lay about smartly, and drop anchor to pay homage to one of our shipmates going ashore. We honor the years served, the guidance, the leadership, the friendship, and the expertise that this shipmate has really given us for these past 26 years. Flag detail. Post. I led my 
bystanders and friends. I followed them. I watched over them. They loved me. I was on a small hill lane as she I was dirty, battle torn, and tired. My sailors and marines cheered me. I was proud. I had a soil burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of countries that I have helped to set free. It does not hurt, for I am invincible. I have been soiled, burned, torn, and trampled on the streets of my own country. My mind is done by those with whom I have served in battle. It hurts. But I shall overcome, for I am strong. I have slipped the surly bounds of earth, and from my vantage point on the moon I stand watch for the ring frontiers of space. I have been a silent witness to all of America's finest hours. But my finest hour comes when I stand torn into strips to be used as bandages for my new comrades on the field of battle. And I fly half fast among my sails and marines. And when I lie in the trembling arms of the drinking mother, the great side of the fallen son of God. My name is Old Glory. Long may I wait. Dear God, long may I wait. Like detail. Post. Forward. Back. Side boys. Post. Yes, even before some of us were born into this world, this shipmate stood the watch. In those years when storm clouds of war were seen brewing on the horizon of history, this shipmate stood the watch. Many times he would cast an eye ashore and see his family standing there, needing his guidance and help, needing that hand to hold during those hard times. But he still stood the watch. He stood the watch for 26 years. He stood the watch so that we, our families, and our fellow countrymen could sleep soundly in safety each and every night, knowing that a sailor stood the watch. Today, we are here to say, shipmate, the watch stands relieved. Relieved by those you have trained, guided, and led. Cap McHugh, you stand relieved. We have the watch. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remain standing for the remainder of the ceremony. Chaplain Hahn will now deliver the benediction. Will you join me in prayer, please? May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us all. May the Lord lift up his face upon a great nation, navy, and our family and loved ones. Give us all his everlasting peace, and may God bless America. Amen. Bosun, stand by to pipe aside. Shipmate going ashore. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain McHugh will now report to Admiral Smith and request permission to go ashore for the final time.
Captain, United States Navy, retired, departing. Captain, United States Navy retired and family departing. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's change of command and retirement ceremony. You are cordially invited to attend the reception in the back of the hangar.